Sure, it's missing the fancy touch bar above the keyboard, but the entry-level version of the new 13-inch MacBook Pro is the one that most people will wind up buying. But it's also $200 more than its predecessor. Is it worth it? At Laptop Mag and Perch Labs, we test and review over 100 laptops per year. The new MacBook Pro sports a more compact aluminum design that's 17% thinner. At three pounds, it's just as light as the MacBook Air, but Windows Ultra Portables like the Dell XPS 13 and HP Spectre are still lighter. You can take your pick from Apple's traditional but boring silver finish or a new space gray color that I like better. But there's a trade-off for that slim profile. Apple includes just two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. This means no full-size USB port for plugging in your iPhone, and no SD card slot for transferring pics from your camera. The good news is that the ports you do have can be simultaneously used for charging, data transfer, or connecting up to two 4K displays. The MacBook Pro's keyboard is a lot flatter than before, which means there's not much travel, but I found the second generation butterfly mechanism to be plenty snappy when typing my review, hitting my typical 65 to 70 words per minute. No, you don't get a touchscreen, but the touchpad is twice as large as before, and the force touch haptic feedback makes it feel mechanical, even though it's not. The Retina display literally outshines the competition. It hit nearly 500 nits of brightness on our tests, and it covers more of the color gamut than its Windows foes. This screen is great for watching video or editing photos. See those stereo speakers on either side of the keyboard? They're twice as powerful as before. I cranked my favorite tunes on Spotify without that usual nasty distortion. In order to include Intel's Iris graphics, Apple decided to equip the MacBook Pro with a 6th generation Core i5 processor instead of the latest 7th generation chip. The result is a notebook that's fairly speedy, but actually behind the competition. When it comes to overall performance, the MacBook topped the category average, but fell to the latest machines from Dell, HP, and Lenovo. At least the new SSD is speedy. It hit more than 500 megabytes per second, which tops all of its closest Windows competitors. The new MacBook certainly isn't lacking in endurance. Its battery lasted over a whopping 12 hours on our web surfing test. That trumps most Windows Ultra Portables, though the Dell XPS 13 is still the one to beat. Among the newer laptops in Apple's lineup, the 1499 13-inch MacBook Pro represents the sweet spot. It has a bigger screen and more power than the 1299 12-inch MacBook, and while it lacks the innovative touch bar on the 1799 Pro, this model will be fast enough for most people. Some Windows machines offer full touchscreens and more horsepower for your money, but for those who prefer Mac OS and to live in the Apple ecosystem, the new 13-inch MacBook Pro won't disappoint. This is Mark Spoonauer for Laptop Mag. For the full review, go to laptopmag.com.